Hey people, welcome once again to my game room. Hey, I got something a little different for you, a little treat here. A game called Tico. I don't know how many of you folks might have heard of Tico, but uh, it's got quite a backstory, and uh, particularly involving the guy that invented the game. Why don't you watch my little mini documentary here about the inventor of Tico, and then uh, we'll teach you how to play the game, and a little bit of uh, comment at the end of, uh, of those little segments, okay? So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. It's not that I'm a huge fan of John Scarney, but he did lead an interesting life. And he did have an influence on board game design. But his greatest claim to fame was in the world of playing cards. Card magic, gambling strategies, sleight of hand, and much more. John Scarn was born in Niles, Ohio in 1903. The family moved to New Jersey where he spent his school years. He proved to be a whiz at math and discovered early on that he had an affinity for playing cards. Before he reached his teen years, he was already winning at cards and scamming the cons at their own game. He left school after the eighth grade and made money with card tricks and table magic. His reputation eventually led him to become a consultant on gambling for New Jersey casinos and law enforcement and even the U.S. Army, where he provided training to fresh recruits on how to recognize scams and rigged games while deployed in foreign countries. He started writing books at card play and other games, and he was very self-assured and confident, some might say arrogant. Over his 82-year lifetime, he wrote scores of books, toured the world with his card tricks and consulting business, and rubbed elbows with celebrities and world leaders. He counted Orson Welles, Joe DiMaggio, and Franklin Roosevelt as personal friends. The legendary Harry Houdini once told him, no one will ever be a better press agent for John Scarney than John Scarney himself. John Scarney took that to heart in spades. See what I did there? After 15 years of experimentation, Scarney came up with his most famous invention in 1945, the board game called Tico. He published the game himself and met with some success, writing on his notoriety in the gaming world at the time. After some further refinements, Tico was finally available to the public in 1952, and he took every opportunity to promote that to his audiences. In 1955, he wrote the definitive guide on the game Tico, introduced with these words. Said to combine the principles of tic-tac-toe, checkers and chess, plus several entirely new game principles, Tico surpasses these and other games for sheer fun and enjoyment and is a new best-selling sensation that is certain to go down in history as one of the greatest games of all time. Hyperbole notwithstanding, it is a fun little game. Mr. Scarney did invent other games as well, but poured his heart and soul into his precious Tico. In fact, his son was named John Tico Scarney. Yes, he was. Nobody knows how many Tico games were actually sold during the 50s and 60s, but John Scarney, of course, claimed sales in the millions. Copies do show up in estate sales, antique stores, and on eBay, where I got my copy. But why isn't it as ubiquitous as John Scarney predicted it would be? Even he admitted himself that it may take a generation or two for Tico to be fully appreciated. So John Scarney had uh, developed the game of Tico, and here's my copy. This board is a reproduction. I could not find the original board um, yet. I do have two sets of the uh, tokens. Um, these are the uh, original tokens here. Um, they did make a set of tokens that were uh, that had numbers on them, so that you could uh, follow which token was being moved. The game pieces are in red and black, four to each player. The black player takes the first turn. But before we start, let's take a look at the win condition. The first player to get all four of their pieces in a row of four, either orthogonally or diagonally, wins the game. In addition, a small square pattern also wins the game. According to the rule booklet, the winner should declare Tico when they win. 
I'll leave that up to you. As with many such pattern making games, it starts with a placement phase. Turn after turn, the players drop their tokens onto any available space, blocking opponents from forming a winning pattern. The game can be won during the placement phase, but the game will probably continue into the movement phase. In this phase, pieces are moved in turn one space in any direction to a neighboring space. That's all you need to know to enjoy Tico. Of course, if you believe Mr. Scarney, there are a million variations. The basic rules here, this, uh, this was from the 1954 release of the game, but then there's also the little booklet that came in later games, which is advanced play and variations on the game. I also have a little peg version here that I play once in a while. I'd like to produce this game again. It's a good game, but the uh, estate of Mr. Scarney um, has got a pretty firm grip on it uh, as far as reproduction rights. So that's Tico. I hope you get a chance to play it sometime. Look it up online and you can uh, you know, get the rules in a PDF file someplace, I'm sure. Uh, as usual, I thank you for, for tuning in. I hope you uh, enjoyed this little video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel here. Um, click on that little bell so that you get notified when we uh, upload some uh, future episodes. By all means, I'd like to hear your comments and questions. And if you have any suggestions of uh, games that you'd like to see in future episodes, be sure and let me know. Meanwhile, like I always say sometimes, be sure to play every day.